Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel, and I'm now going to answer question number five from the October 2022 International A Level at Excel Pure Mathematics P1 paper. In this question here, we are told about a curve with equation y equals f of x, where x is greater than zero, and we are not told the equation of the curve. However, we are told that the f dash of x, which is the first derivative, or the gradient function, or the, the function after it's been differentiated, is given by 12 over root x plus x over 3 minus 4. And we're also told that there's a point p, which has coordinates 9, 8, that lies on the original curve c. And we've got to find the equation of that curve, given the information that they gave us. So first of all, what we know is that if we want to find f of x from its derivative, then we should understand that if we differentiate, if we integrate, sorry, if we integrate f dash of x with respect to x, that's going to give us f of x, right? That's what's going to give us. So if we integrate this function with respect to x, we're going to get the original function. Right now, so before we start doing that, what we're going to do is I'm going to write f, of f dash of x in a way which is compatible for us or easy for us to um, integrate. All right, so I want to write things in index form, not in third form, and with the x terms in the numerator. So I know that the square root of x by the laws of indices is the same as x to the power of a half. And I know that 1 over x to the power of a half is the same as x to the power of negative a half. We know that from the laws of indices. Okay, so uh, we know that the, the square root of a is a to the power of a half. We know that 1 over a to the power of n is a to the power of negative n. Right? The negative power means the reciprocal. So I can rewrite this as 12 times x to the power of negative a half. And then... I can leave this as it is, but I would prefer to write this as one third x and then minus four. Right? I haven't done any integration yet. I have just, you could say, prepared this expression so that I can now integrate it easily. So to integrate this, once I integrate it, I'm now going to get f of, f of x. It will become f of x when I start integrating it. So to integrate an expression, what you have to do is to integrate a term, you add one to the power. So you're going to have minus half plus one, which is a half. And then you divide by the new power. So I'll just write it like that for now. Divide by a half. Plus, you have one third. Now I'm going to add one to the power, comes x squared, and divide by the new power, which is two. As for the constant term, it just basically gains an x. Right? Because if you differentiate four x, you're going to get four. So if you integrate four, you get four x. Okay, it's like... You can think this has this is like in terms of x 4x to the power of 0 add 1 to the power becomes 4x power of 1 over 1 4x but you have to remember that there's also a plus c you have to write at the end very very important because there could have been a constant when you differentiated which when you differentiate a constant becomes 0 so you have to write plus c to stand for that constant all right so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to simplify each term and then we're going to proceed. So 12 divided by a half. Don't make the mistake of thinking that's 6. No. 12 divided by a half. 12 divided by a half. You can think of it like this. Is the same as 12 times 2 over 1. Right? So it's like 24. So this is when you divide by something, you will multiply by its reciprocal. Divide by a fraction, you multiply by its reciprocal. So that's 12 times 2, which is 24. X to the power of a half. And you have x, this can be one, one third times two, which is times a half, which is uh, one over six. So you have plus one over six, x squared minus four x plus c. All right now, we haven't finished the question. Many people might think we finished the question, we found f of x. But when they gave us some further information, which is the point p, we can complete f of x fully and find the value of c using that. So you know that P is a point where X is 9 and Y is 8. So P is a point 9, 8. 
So I know this is where x equals 9 and y equals 8. So when I substitute inside this equation um, 9 instead of x, then y should come out as 8. And remember, y is equal to f of x, so f of x will therefore be 8. So if I replace the f of x with 8, okay, then I'll have to have 9 to the power of a half, which is the square root of 9, plus 1 over 6 times 9 squared, minus 4 times 9, plus c. So this is going to help us find what c is. So 8 is equal to 24 times 3. Okay, that's 24 times 3, plus that's going to be 81 over 6, minus 36 plus c. So let's calculate what that gives us. So we have 24 times 3, plus 81 over 6, minus 36. That gives us 99 over 2. So you have 8 equals 99 over 2 plus C. So therefore, we can say that C is equal to 8 minus 99 over 2. So we have 8 minus the answer. 8, take away the answer, which gives us minus 83 over 2. So C is equal to negative 83 over 2. So we can replace that C now in our equation. So we can say, therefore, the f of x is going to be equal to 24 x to the power of a half. We could, we could write that as square root of x if you want, plus 1 over 6 x squared. Could be written as x squared over 6 if you want, minus 4 x. And then we got c as negative 83 over 2. And there we have the answer to part a of this question. f of x equals this, OK, 24 x to the power of a half plus 6x squared minus 4x minus 83 over 2. Okay, so um, I'm going to take that actually because I need it for the next part of the question. All right, so let's just take it to part B. Now, for part B, we are told, okay, we have our function. So part B says, the line, in fact, I don't think I actually need it, to be honest. We don't need it. Anyway, no problem. I've got it in case we need it. Okay, so I'll just put it up there. In case we need to use this, all right, we will use it. All right, now, it says the line L is normal to the curve C at P. Find the coordinates of the point at which L crosses the y-axis. So, in fact, we don't actually need the original equation because we've got the gradient function. So, basically, uh, what does a normal to C at P mean? Okay, well, just say you have a curve. I don't know what it looks like. I'm just drawing a random curve. Okay, but let's, let's just say this is the point P. Let's just say this is the point P. Okay, now, the tangent to P would be a straight line which shares the same gradient as on the curve as point P. So the, the, the same gradient as the curve at point P would be um, a line which passes through that point P will have the same gradient as the curve at that point P. Right? So it will be like a tangent. It will just brush the curve at that point. So the, gra the, the, the gradient of this tangent is the same as the gradient of the curve at that point. That's the tangent. Now the normal is perpendicular to the tangent. So the normal is a line which actually passes through the curve at that point. Okay, but with an ant, with an, um, it passes it such that it is at 90 degrees to the tangent at that point, perpendicular to the tangent. So the angle between the normal and the tangent is 90 degrees. So if this is the tangent, then this would be the normal, right? If that's a tangent, that would be the normal, okay? I'm not saying this is what the curve looks like or anything. I'm just giving you an example of how we can see what the tangent and the normal is, right? So at P, at P, okay, we can say that um, the gradient of f of x, the gradient of f of x, okay, is found when we put f dash of the coordinate, the x coordinate of um, the point P into the gradient function. If we replace 9 into the gradient function, we're going to get the gradient of f of x, therefore the gradient of the tangent. Okay, the gradient of the tangent. So if I replace the 
x with 9, I have 12 divided by the square root of 9, plus 9 over 3 minus 4. Well, that gives us 12 over 3 plus 3 minus 4. 12 over 3 is 4. 4 minus 4 is 4, is 0 plus 3, so you got 3. So we can say, therefore, the gradient of the tangent at P is equal to 3. So that means that the gradient of the normal, okay, at P is going to be the negative reciprocal of 3 because the gradient of the tangent and normal, they are perpendicular and perpendicular gradients, they have gradients which are negative reciprocals of each other. So you turn the fraction upside down, so 3 over 1 becomes 1 over 3 and then you change its sign. So this is going to become negative 1 over 3, right? So that's the gradient of the normal at, at the point P. And we know the point P has coordinates 9, 8. So we can start finding the equation of the line because we want to find where the line crosses the y-axis, the normal crosses the y-axis. So if I find the equation of the line, I can find where it crosses the y-axis. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to say, okay, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. I like to use this formula myself, right? So you have y minus y1, which is the y-coordinate of the point P, equals m, which is minus 1 over 3, times x minus x1, which is the x-coordinate of the point P. Now, what we don't need to do here is we don't actually need to find the equation fully, right? This is like the beginning of finding the equation. If you rearrange it and simplify, that will be the equation of the normal. But what we need to do is we need to find where the normal crosses the, the y-axis. So we know at the y-axis, x is equal to 0. So if I replace the x with 0, that will tell me what the y-coordinate of the, you know, um, the, um, the, the y-intercept is, basically. The place where it crosses the y-axis. That will tell me it. Right? Where it crosses the y-axis is when x equals 0. So if I replace the x with 0 in this equation, that will directly give me what I'm looking for. So I have minus 1 third times 0 minus 9, which is minus 9. So you can say y minus 8 is equal to... That's going to give you 3, therefore y is equal to 3 plus 8, which is 11. So y is equal to 11. Now it says find the coordinates of the point. The coordinates, okay, of that point are 0, 11. Okay, you have to give it in coordinate form. So that's where L passes through the y-axis at that point, 0, 11. Okay, so there we have the answer to question number 5, part B and part A done earlier. And this is from the P1 paper from October 2022, International Air with Excel. Other questions from this paper can be found in the playlist that will appear in this part of the page at the end of the video. Other questions from the topic of integration and its applications will be found in this playlist over there. Um, you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. Thank you for watching and see you soon.